Welcome back. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at list manipulation. Um, so first of all, how do we get a subset of a list? So if I've got a super long list L and I only want to look at the first three elements, I could do something like tree take L. Um, so that's put using this hash command. And if I didn't know what that was doing, I could simply go to my overloaded glyphs. Remember over here, I can look up the hash and I can say which one of these does it look like it's doing? It looks like it's this one. I'm going to go here and, and learn more about that. Um, so this is our take operator. We can flip the sign on that, so make it negative. And instead of getting the first three elements, 10, 20, 30, I'm going to get the last three, which is 30, 40, 50. So Q is clever. You just change the sign to get the first or the last um, elements. And then very similarly, we can use this underscore to drop some elements from the list. So if I want to get rid of the first two, I can do to drop L which gets rid of 10 and 20. And then similarly, I can flip the sign on that and drop the last two elements as well. Um, so another kind of um, way to do this first example would be to use the keyword sublist. So I've got a simple example here, three sublist L, that's doing um, something very similar to three take L. Um, so I can just pass it as I, like I did with take, the, the uh, N elements I want returned. And then with sublist, we have another option. We can actually pass it the index that we wanted to start at um, as well beforehand. So if I run this, you see I'm saying start at index two, which is here, and then give me three elements. So it's passing back these three. And then with this one, it's saying start at index zero and give me um, six elements. So if I change that to be four, for example, it's going one, two, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four. We start from I and note it, it does return, it counts these spaces as a character when you're talking about a string. Um, probably most often you'd see this format used. Um, also with sublist, it's important to note the difference. So we do have a difference when it comes to um, the, the count or the, or the number of results returned. So we see that when we pass um, basically a number that's bigger than the length of our list. So for example, I've got till five and I'm taking eight elements. And then for the second one, I'm saying, give me eight sublist of the list. So you can see in the version on sublist, it stops after I run out of elements of my list. But with, with the take operator, it actually starts broadcasting or just repeating the list again up to eight elements long. So there's a Take can be a little bit dangerous, um, especially when you're looking at large tables. You might do something like a thousand take the size of the table or the table name. And then, you know, the table might only actually have three rows in it. But because you're duplicating over and over again, those rows, um, it can look a bit misconceiving. So. So generally, it's it's probably safer to use sublist, um, but you'll see both out in the wild. Um, so it's good to be aware of both. Okay, so have a go at this exercise. Um, there's a few more keywords um, I don't think we've touched on yet that might be useful to you. Um, one is the keyword uh, first, uh, first here, and then the keyword last. So whenever you're talking about getting um, elements of the list, you could do always do first. If you only want the first element, you get 10 returned and you can use last as well, which would return the last element, um, oops, either. Um, so just that might be useful to you in your exercise. Okay, once you're comfortable with that, let's move on and look at finding items in list. So for looking up items in a list or finding items in a list, we're gonna use this question mark operator. And we've seen this before, um, but we used it for creating Gener and then generating random data. So if you remember before we said, if you pass um, a singular value on the left, that's saying how many values you want returned. And then this is your um, list here of, of um, the data that you want to generate from. So if we run this, you see um, it's doing it twice here. I'm just using functional and, and fixed notation, um, but I'm just creating five random numbers from this input list. So if I run that over and over again, that obviously changes, that's doing the random operation. Um, so just by changing the parameters around, so instead of on the left-hand side of having a singular integer input, 
I'm actually going to pass it a list. Um, this is now telling Q, hang on a minute, they're not trying to use random. What they're trying to do is do a lookup on the list. So when we have it in this formation, so either using this functional or infix version, um, your element on the left is the list that you're looking up in. And then your element on the right hand side is what you're trying to look up. So this is saying, find me five in this list on the left. So when I run this, you see, depending on the, you know, either notation, you get the same result. It's looking up five and I can see, yep, zero with first, second index, and I'm getting two returned. So no matter how many times that's run, I get the same result returned because obviously that's not changing. And we're just showing here, you actually could pass multiple um, lookup values on the right hand side. So I could look up five and one, for example, and it's giving me the second element returned and then it's finding one in the zero width element. Um, so just again, if that's kind of throwing you a bit, go back to your best friend, the overloaded glyphs page and look up question mark here and you'll be able to um, gauge a bit better which, which version of um, this question mark where you're looking at at any point in time. Okay, um, so that in that way we can find elements in a list and, and that's really handy. Um, another keyword that's crucial when looking at um, lists and doing some lookups is this where. So if our list is just booleans, where will return any indices where it's true. So anytime I've got a 1B, I'm going to get the index returned, which is fine. That can be useful. Um, probably a more useful version of where is combining it with, with a comparative operator. So what I mean by that, this here greater than um, symbol. So if I've got um, a list here um, of 10 elements between 0 and 50, I can see that any time that's true, so where L is greater than 30, I get the index return. So if we have a quick look here, I'm seeing, um, you know, 45 is greater than 30, yes, true. Uh, 19 is greater than 30, false. Um, 39 is greater than 30, true. And then you can see I'm getting those, only those trues returned. So you can see how I'm, I'm, I'm first of all, basically generating my list of booleans, then, then where it becomes more useful when I've got that list created. Um, and then we can also pass these positions back into the original list. So for example, if I just stick um, L in front of that, and then what's returned from this here is obviously a list of indexes. So that's just been passed back into the original list. And you can see what's returned is any of the values where it's true. So that's um, something very handy and common you'll see. You also don't need the square brackets here. Um, again, probably for this one, I'd say it looks cleaner without. Um, and you can do that. You can you could always have one if you wanted to as well. Um, returns the same thing. I was actually missing my equals to there, which is why I have one less value. Okay. Um, so then we have an exercise here. We've got two actually. Um, so they're just testing your understanding of that. So have a go with them. They should be fairly straightforward for you. Um, now this section here is just pointing out some of the useful inbuilt functions that we have when we're talking about um, operating on lists. A lot of them you've seen already through this training material. So things like count, um, I've pointed out first and last. We can also do things like max and min, which returns the max and min of a list. You can get the average, the standard deviation, variation, sorry, it's var variance and then total sum. So, you know, you can run your keyword upon your list and you'll see here, sometimes we get singular values returned and sometimes we get um, an aggregated value returned. So obviously, you know, doing count um, would return the full count of the list, doing sum would return, you know, your total summation of a list um, and then max would just return one value. What is the max value of the list? So depending on the the keyword, um, you might get a different result returned. Um, and also just second, if there's re-exercise here, just getting you to try out those. So looking at first and last in particular. And then again, we've got some more keywords here. So these are looking at kind of running sums, running maximums. Um, so you can see some of them in action. Um, so if I wanted to get the total running sum on a list, I could use the keyword sums, which is this last one here. So you can see it's spitting out every result along the way. Um, whereas sum um, would only give you the last result, which is 320. Um, but if you wanted all the intermediate results, basically, you'd use sums. 
and in that way you get this list or, or vector returned. Okay, um, so there's a short exercise again, a little bit more advanced this time. Um, we've got a hint here. You might want to consider using the iterator each and you, the, the keyword count and combining them together to, to do this exercise. Um, and then once you're happy with that, we'll just take a quick look at this last section on list comparison, um, which we have kind of covered already. But just to reiterate, um, equals and match are two different ways to do some comparison in Q. We did look at this in the Adams module. Um, but just to be aware of when you're using it with lists, you must have lists of equal length when using equals. So for example, here I'm saying is B equal to A, B equal to B, C equal to C, and I get 0, 1, 1. If I, for example, had a fourth um, element on my left-hand side list and I kept the right-hand side the same, I'd get a length error. Um, and then once I stuck in that, that would be fine. So just to be aware of that, um, similar with these integer values. Um, and then we're using the match operator. That's checking if the entire thing isn't identical. So you're only going to get either a, a true or false returned from match, um, not just for each individual value. So you can see here, I get the entire one returned or, or zero B. Okay. Um, so I'll see you in the next video.